I want to have a quirky intro. Oh, I need to turn the light on. Striking. Tube light. <clears throat> hey guys. Hello. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Emily. Yeah. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I put out new videos every week. This new year, I really want to keep making content about books. I love reading. I love sharing reading recommendations with you guys. I also make some lifestyle videos, some travel videos, and if you have any requests for content, please feel free to comment below. This video is a little wordy, so I'm just going to get right into it. I read 52 books in 2022. I think the year before that, I probably read like three or four and I hadn't really read a lot since I was like younger like a little child when I was reading Harry Potter and like series of unfortunate events and books like this so it's been a while since I really was like into reading I don't know if that's because in school it just kind of felt like it was being forced on me like an obligation and it just kind of turned me off to it but this year I really found I found myself in books I'll pull up my notes here A little history of how I got started reading this year. I was supposed to be in a film, which I did end up filming, but it we were supposed to film in January and it was postponed for three months. And I don't wanna get into details, but there was a lot of anxiety surrounding the circumstances of that occasion. Not only did it create just anxiety and depression in me, but I literally learned the night before we were supposed to start shooting that the shoot was being postponed. So I had all of this like creative energy that had built up in me with nowhere to put it. Needless to say, when I got home, I was just like not doing well and that's when I found books <laughs> again so I started reading a little later into January but I was still able to do 52 books which is average a book a week this year academia kind of put me off to reading because it just made it feel like a chore and so coming to reading naturally on my own this time there was something new and exciting about it it's, it's a choice now nobody's making me read it's not an obligation it's not a chore i'm choosing to do it i'm choosing what i'm reading i'm choosing what i want to read about i'm choosing the authors that i want to read it just is another thing as an adult that i get to choose which is exciting i don't like being told what to do <laughs> it's really really helped with anxiety and depression I think a reason for that is because I've replaced a lot of screen time with reading and I think it's pretty obvious why that helps with anxiety and depression I'm not gonna like go into all of that picking up a book instead of picking up my phone It's just it really is like a game changer. I'm not saying that I don't scroll anymore I'm just saying having the intention of saying I'm gonna bring a book with me on the train instead of a phone or whatever It just it really changes the game anxiety wise for me things were really slow Like I said in the beginning of my year, I was supposed to do this film and it got postponed and so reading just kind of felt like I was doing something. I don't want to say like productive because not everything in life has to be based on productivity but it kind of just gave me a sense of accomplishment that I did something that I wanted to do for me that was benefiting me and my mental health in some way. It's kind of like a form of self-care and so for that reason it felt like an accomplishment. Like I was broadening my mind and like just doing, doing this for myself and reading for myself. You feel creative, you feel expansive. There's really nothing more satisfying than just being like, I just finished this book and it was amazing. Reading just puts things into perspective, which is another way it helps with anxiety. Obviously, if you read self-help books, it kind of helps more directly with that. But even just having like, we all kind of long for escapism. And I think reading is like a really, really healthy form of that. There are unhealthy forms of that. I think reading is an amazing form of escapism because you're just really using your brain and expanding your brain and like getting creative and thinking in new ways hold for ambulance and thinking in new ways and um, it's just fantastic yeah it's fantastic reading didn't cure my depression and anxiety but it was definitely like one of the factors this year i think that helped it subside i also love reading because it has given me a sense of community reading is kind of like cool again i don't know like reading is in i've started sharing books with my friends and they've started sharing books with me but it's also like especially like on the internet with booktube and book talk and bookstagram and stuff seeing everyone and like what they're reading and what they like being part of that conversation is really exciting it's a really nice way to connect to people that's like beyond social media it's like we've all sat down and read this story and experienced it in our own way and i just i don't know i think that's kind of um 
beautiful. Even like, like I got my hair done a month or two ago and the girl that did my hair was like talking to me about all these books that like we both read and it's just like a, it's like a really nice way to connect to people. I love, I love it. And it's cool too because like I have, I'm on Goodreads now which I'll kind of get into a bit later but I have all of these friends that I didn't really know read and now I'm just looking at, or not even friends but just people that I've, I've known for a while and just looking at everything they're reading and books they want to read. Goodreads is amazing. Yeah, it just helps you feel connected to people, I guess. Another reason I love reading is because I'm a creative person and I think it really, like I was saying, expands your creative mind. I was able, I just found like I was engaging in my imagination in ways that I hadn't in a really long time. This year I also got back into this short film that I wrote when I was 19 and I dug it up and just kind of rewrote it and did new things with it. And I, I do think that me reading this much this year has a direct correlation with the fact that I like went more into writing. I also just like started analyzing films in a way that I hadn't before. I'm thinking about things more than I did last year. I just feel generally more creatively stimulated and that has trickled into other areas of my life. I think just because I'm exercising that part of my brain on a regular basis and as an actor, somebody that is creative for my job, that really helps. I also made this YouTube channel. I don't know if that's because I'm a reader, but it is a creative thing, so I don't know. It definitely made me have more convictions with my opinions. It made me a little more confident in a lot of ways, so that could also be connected to why I started a YouTube channel. I think reading made me more confident, a more confident speaker and person with thoughts and opinions. It made me more confident in sharing my feelings and thoughts with other people. I was always really shy speaking in class and so that's something that I've always struggled with and I think reading a lot has just helped me be like, you know what, no, like I know, I know what I'm talking about, so listen to me. Listen to me. It was also just fun as an actor. Like, the, the, I wouldn't do this in every book, but some books I would cast myself in roles and think about, oh, like if I was shooting a movie of this, how would we do it? Even if I wasn't in it, even just like as a filmmaker, it was fun to think about. Obviously casting myself is fun. Sometimes I'd cast other people in my life or other actors and stuff. So just like really getting like my storytelling game strong. Is that a sentence? Whatever. And it also just helped my attention span a lot. I have a pretty good attention span, so I think that's actually probably a lie. I think my attention span has stayed the same. It's always been really good and it continues to be really good. But I think it could help your attention span if you have a bad one. <laughs> Some tips for reading more from me to you. A lot of people say this, when you start reading again, just read something that's gonna get you hooked. Make it trashy, read, you know, like Jessica Simpson's biography. Read what you have to read. Not Sorry, no hate on Jessica Simpson, she's great. I'm just saying, you don't need to read a classic, you don't need to read Shakespeare, you don't need to read this like dense nonfiction book. Just read something juicy and like something that's gonna keep you hooked and in the book. You can go into more dense material later, like once you've developed reading habits, but when you're first getting started, just, go for the juice. I made this this video on thrillers, my 10 best thriller recommendations. I'll put it up here. Those like thrillers are really good in terms of just like getting hooked into reading. I also think Colleen Hoover books, I feel like she can be, like she started to be kind of polarizing, but I do think if you're trying to get back into reading, like the way that she writes, it's just very, very, she's a very easy author to read quickly. I finish her books usually in like one or two days. It just goes really fast. So thrillers, Colleen Hoover, great place to start. Also just like looking at what people are recommending like going on YouTube and like watching YouTube videos on reading recommendations, going on Instagram, going on BookTok. It makes it seem really cute and like fun and it gets you really excited. But it also gives you like helpful information on maybe some books that you might want to start reading. So Goodreads, as I say, is really good for that. Like you can look at all of your friends, see like what they've read, how they rated it, what books they want to read this year. And you can also you can follow me on Goodreads. I'll put my link in the description and you can follow like all of, you know, your other favorite like booktubers on Goodreads. It's a great place to go and just get really excited about your reading list. Goodreads is great too. You make a goal every year and it kind of helps you get excited about reading and excited about building your list of books that you want to read. And you'll just have this huge list of books that you won't even know like where to start. Just getting recommendations and getting excited about it is also I think a good tip for, um, for starting to read. Finding a community that could kind of make you accountable like Goodreads that have that challenge like I said that tracks your reading goals for the year. That's great. I share the books that I read with my social media following and that's kind of a cool way to keep myself accountable just always have stuff to share you know maybe have a friend you want to do a reading challenge with getting a reading journal I know there's a lot of cool reading journals out there or you can just kind of make your own and you know every time you finish a book just write a few things about it you can also write reviews and goodreads so yeah there's lots of ways to kind of track your progress 
We've talked about how to like find books to read, but how do you read? Like how do you like sit down and read? Just finding the time to do that sometimes can seem overwhelming. I think two great places to start is when you first wake up and later at night before you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep though is, I, I actually wouldn't start there. I would read for a half an hour when you first wake up. The main places I think you'll find you get the most reading in are journeys throughout the day that like you have to do, but can read while you're doing it. So like your commute, for example, you know, bring a book on the train with you. If you take a car, put an audiobook on. Have a book in the bathroom with you. <laughs> While you're cooking, you can also listen to an audiobook. Anytime you sit down to like go on your phone and scroll. People make two to three hours a day to scroll on your phone. Like you can make two to three hours a day to read. And you can still have time to like watch TV and stuff too. Read while you're like waiting for your laundry. Read while you're waiting for your tea to boil. Find those moments in your day where you're idling around, waiting for something or doing something, but you're not like you can read while you're doing it, if that makes sense. Even like, I don't know if you're the type of person that likes to read while you're working out on the treadmill or something, but there's so many times during your day, I think that you can really find to read that you're just not even aware of yet. I work with Pomodoros, which were kind of made popular by the productivity planner. So I'll put a timer on for 25 minutes and do work. And then I'll take a break for five minutes and usually in my five minute break, I'll like read a chapter. So your lunch breaks too, you can read. There's always so much time to read. If money is cutting you back, it's it's really expensive to just buy new books all the time. I highly recommend Libby. It's, well, it's an app and it's basically an online library card and you can get books on your Kindle, which you don't even need a Kindle for. You can just download it on your phone and read it on there. Although I do recommend getting a Kindle if you want to make that investment. I don't really like reading on my phone because then you get kind of tempted to like go scroll. I like having a separate kind of device for that. The only thing with Libby is you really have to put yourself on hold for certain books. So sometimes you have to wait and you have to read it in a certain amount of time, but it's free. So that's awesome. And they also have audiobooks, So cost is holding you back. Libby is great. There's also just so many great places you could buy used books, like eBay. I don't really like to buy used books though, if I'm being honest. I would just rather do Libby, but. And then book of the month, they're a little expensive. Like they're $17 a month for one book, but then each add-on after that is like 10 bucks and they're really nice hardcover book. If that's in your budget, I am a book of the month BFF. So I recommend them because they read all of the up and coming books. And sometimes you get to read books before their big commercial release. And you kind of just like know what's up in the book community. And even if you don't get a certain book, you know it's out and you can go get it on Libby or something. So book of the month is also a great resource. I would say like make your Goals attainable too. Like if 52 books just seems like whoa crazy to you, like maybe do like 30 or maybe do like a book a month. Make your goals attainable to you. Know who you are and what works for you. You know, make your goals attainable that way. And like I say, audiobooks I think are a great way to get extra reading in. I'm personally not crazy about them. Um, I find that I've found enough time to like sit down and read that I don't really like need to introduce audiobooks into my life to get my reading in. I gave it a, a good shot last year. I probably listened to like five or six and it's just not the same for me, but it works for a lot of people and you can listen to audiobooks, like I said, while you're driving, while you're walking, while you're cooking, while you're taking a shower, getting ready in the morning, getting ready for bed. Like you can just always be listening to an audiobook. So if that's something that works for you, then you go. Okay. Oh, and another thing, sorry about audiobooks that's really cool is that you can like be reading two books at once. Like you could be listening to one and then reading one. So that's cool. And you can also like, if you have the physical copy of the book and an audiobook, you can read along with the audiobook. If you find that your attention span, like especially like in the beginning is kind of like not that great for reading, that could be a cool exercise to just kind of get you focusing is like having the audiobook read out loud while you follow along. And then maybe like halfway through the book, try turning the audiobook off and just trying to focus. Like I said, I don't have attention problems. Um, and then the last thing I would say is really set the stage for yourself. Make reading cute, make reading sexy, you know? Like when your seasonal depression hits, just be like, great. It's like dark at like 2 p.m. and it's raining and life feels so sad right now, but I'm just gonna put on like my record, put on a robe, get a glass of wine, not at 2 p.m., but like, you know, a little bit later. Put on some scent, feel yourself, you know? Like really just set the scene, put on some jazz. I mean, that's me. I don't know. Maybe your setting of the scene looks totally different, but I do think if you like set like a sweet, if you make your environment an environment that like invites you to read, I think you'll be more likely to read. And I think that looks totally different for everybody, but for me, um, it's jazz in a row. Okay, anyway, so enough of my blabbering. I'm going to just quickly list the books that I read this year in the order that I read them. Goodreads is amazing. I'm just going right to my Goodreads.
Goodreads page, my year in 2022 in books. The 52 books I read in 2022 are Touch, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Reckless Girls, The Silent Patient, My Body, Daisy Jones and the Six, The Golden Couple, Verity, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, The Midnight Library, Malibu Rising, The Paris Apartment, Attached, When We Lost Our Heads, It Ends With Us, The Love Hypothesis, Who Is Maud Dixon, Atomic Habits, Maidens, Darling Girl, Heartbones, Beach Read, Reminders of Him, The Unhoneymooners, November 9th, People We Meet on Vacation, Love and Other Words, Book Lovers, The Hotel Nantucket, Things We Do in the Dark, You're Invited, 28 Summers, Local Woman Missing, Every Summer After, Where the Crawdads Sing, I'm Glad My Mom Died, Bunny, The Woman in the Window, Daisy Darker, Carrie Soto is Back, The Last Mrs. Parrish, It Starts With Us, A Flicker in the Dark, Confess, The Perfect Marriage, American Dirt, The Subtle Art of Not Giving the Untethered Soul, The Psychology of Money, The Confidence Effect, Essentialism, and Beautiful Ruins. And if you want to get my ratings on all of those books, just again, my Goodreads link is down below. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, 2023, I'm like going for the book videos. My goal is the same for 2023, a book a week that seemed to work for me. Maybe I'll surpass it, but I don't want to set a goal that's unattainable and I feel like 52 books a week, like I just made it. So yeah, and if you have any book recommendations for this year, please drop them down below. Let's make 2023 a year to read, to put our phones away, and to just like expand our minds more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!